Good evening. This is Jan from New York City, and my channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money, and that is precisely what we're going to talk about, saving money at the grocery store. Welcome to the nighttime version of me. How's everybody doing this evening? Hope that you had a really nice day. Now you want to kick back a little, whatever you're doing. You know, one of the nicest things that I could say about grocery shopping is that we have Unlike with many, many other things like certain bills that are fixed, we have complete flexibility in the grocery shopping arena, which is really, really good. And we need to take advantage of that. But I do notice this, that if you follow certain methods, certain methods may end up making us spend more money and certain methods may help us to save money. I have used these tried and true methods for years in order to save money. This has helped me. This has worked for me. Look at your grocery shopping in a methodical manner. It, you know, run it as if you're running a business. And I tell people this all the time, that in truth and in fact, that we are actually CEOs of our kitchens, and we really, really are. And stuff that goes in our refrigerator or our extended pantries or our regular pantries, of course, is all part of the planning, right? So, okay. So let's get right into it. One of the things that I believe a lot of people make this mistake they make purchases of what I call hit and run meals. Now, don't get me wrong. On occasion, it is a good idea to have a pre-made frozen dinner or like one of those, like, you know, they, they taste great, some of them, like those available meatloafs and everything. But to me, they're not big enough for leftovers. If I'm going to have a meal, and yes, even for families of one. In fact, families of one luck out because we get more bang for our dollar. We really, really do. But let's get back to this for a second. If you avoid the hit and run one time only meals, have one on occasion, totally fine. I get that. But think about something for a minute. If you created in the past when you had a better day, a less tiring day, a day of which you can block out the time, I find it relaxing to batch cook. And I totally have no problem whatsoever making a bunch of frozen meals at the same time, putting them away in the freezer, because I look at it this way. Food in the freezer is absolutely like money in the bank, because actually it is. And then when I want a one time only, I'm yanking out something that I made that is homemade, that I know what's in it. I would have controlled the sodium, for example, I don't care for very salty foods, like in general in life. That's just me. It's just a matter of taste. All right. So that's that's one thing. So try to avoid, as I call, those hit and run uh, type of meals. Okay. The next thing, to avoid food waste, which is really important, try to avoid at all costs anything that would promote food waste. Because we're, we're trying to save money here. We're not trying to waste money here. And the biggest area where people do a lot of food wasting is in the fresh produce arena. For example, they go to the grocery store, they see the shiny colors, everything looks great. Sure, it looks beautiful in the beginning, but many times a lot of your family members aren't into that fresh produce that you might think they are, or even yourself, okay? Or you just can't eat it up fast enough. So plan ahead by doing two things. You could always, you know, follow the directions and blanch certain uh, vegetables and, you know, put them away. This way you avoid some of the loss. Or just, you know, buy certain things that tend to go, take a longer time to go badly. For example, potatoes. If you're careful with the potatoes, they can actually last a lot longer than you think. For example, onions can actually last a lot longer than you think. So do your research on that for the produce that lasts longer because you have to be careful with things like lettuce, okay? So there are certain ways of which you store it. I'm not going to get into the storage part at this juncture, but if you're careful, you will avoid food waste. Now, I have noticed that, for example, uh, fresh peppers, uh, fresh prep, uh, peppers like uh, green or the red ones, they, they kind of last a little while if you're very, very careful. See, again, so there you go with, you know, saving by avoiding food waste. Food waste is not cool. The other thing 
is looking at the month ahead. But if you rather look at it in weekly increments, if you buy two things that you could like roast or a soup or a stew, three things, excuse me, actually, you will have made your entire week's meal easily and cheaply. Example, example, you could roast a chicken and you could roast a beef in the same oven at the same time. Just be careful monitoring the times. You could also cook things like, for example, your stew in your slow cooker, all this in the same day. So it's not like it. I, I personally rather forfeit a few hours every so often, create my meals, pack them up and put them away. I could do that and like have it like for two weeks. If I want, I could go the whole month that way. By having that stuff available, this avoids me from that humongous temptation that everyone in the free world has to pick up the phone and make that call. While there is nothing wrong with occasional eating out, I'm gearing these videos for the folks that have clear saving goals in mind. Okay, and I'm also telling you the stuff that I have done that is tried and true. Now, when it comes to meat, what I personally like to do, I divide it up this way. Again, as a family of one, you have to adapt the ratio, the numbers pro proportionate to what works for your family if you're interested in doing this. I know that there are four weeks in the calendar month. Okay. I also know that I might want to eat meat about three times that week. This is me. Everyone is different. I might want to have red meat like the three times and maybe chicken two times. So what I do is I act accordingly. I will take advantage of those family packs of meat. Okay. And then I will divide it as much as I can. See, even this is a big mistake that a lot of people that a family of ones do not do, one or two. They say, oh, they see these big, you know, family packages. It may be the better bargain. Do your math. Takes a minute or two. It may be the better bargain. Good. Thank you. If I'm getting a better, better um, effect out of it, I will sit down and divide. I like that. And I like knowing, for example, that let's say five uh, five meat items per week five times four is 20 so i'm working with 20 little packs of meat different types of meat to do as i wish with it's always flexible but i have control over the quantity you see that's where i'm a winner i'm going to come back tomorrow night and we're going to continue this conversation does any of this resonate to you are you guys doing that let me know in the comment section below. I want to thank you so much for your time being here. I really appreciate every single one of you. And I'm going to close this out and I'll be right back. Have an amazing, fantastic remainder of your evening. And I'll be back tomorrow night at 7. Take good care. Good night.